What's Gucci everyone? I hope you guys are having a great day. It's me AJ here again and today I want to make a new quick easy Swift tutorial video where I'm going to cover strings and go into arrays at the end. So as you know a string is a way to represent text or a way or words and paragraphs. So one thing I can do is I can say var string and then I can set equal to something within quotes. So I can say this is a string. Isn't that nice? And then also something I can do is if I had another string, I'll call it string two, and let's say I wanted to include string the str um, in my second string. What I could do is I could do backslash str surrounded by parentheses. This is a string that I want to append. And so now if I click, well, one thing I did forget is I didn't forget anything really. If if I clicked that and then did that, then everything would look pretty good. So as you can see right there, the value the value is this is a string, and then with um, this backslash str, I was able to insert str into str2. So now I've got this is a string that I want to append. Pretty clever. So that's really cool with strings, and you can do that multiple times. Just remember, you want to do the backslash. Um, with the parentheses to insert strings into other strings. So something I can also, something also good to know in a programming language is a type of collection called an array. Now a collection is known as a scalar, meaning a scalar meaning it can change size. It can go from zero to two million to two billion, whatever, until you run out of memory. So if I wanted to do var array, the way you initialize an array in most languages, and in this language is with brackets with a square brackets around and then I want to do square brackets and then each element is separated by commas. So I can do one, two, three here. And then something that's very powerful is that you want to loop through and a, a loop through elements in the array. And so the way you do that is with the for keyword. So you say for elements and then I say what I want my elements to named in array. And then when, when I do that, I'll look at my quick book here. When I do for blank in you know the array name of individual scores, I then want to surround it with parentheses, and then so right within this block, then I have access to elements, which is being which every time the loop runs is being changed to one of the elements, and it loops through the array once. It never goes back to the elements again. So now I'm going to print line array, and as you can see here. In my console output, I'll move that over, I have one, two, three because I'm printing those out. So that's pretty nifty right there. So that's something that's really cool. It's a really easy way to be able to print stuff and loop through arrays here. Now something I can also do is within my brackets, I could do if element is greater than 23, I am going to do something. I'm going to print print line. Um, really big and so why am I getting an error here use of unresolved identifier elements and that's because I named it elements instead of elements these must be named the same thing and so let me make this one 33 and see what happens as you can see in my terminal right here I have really big because my terminal is outputting really big because one of my elements was really big what about we say we do we combine this and do the um we do that string adding operator and I do is really big with my for loop and side my conditional if statement. So if statements have parentheses followed by them and then I have a condition. In this case I'm checking if an element, which is a number in this case, is greater than 23. And if it is, I'm gonna print that. And as you can see now here in my console it says 33 is really big, which is pretty cool. So I was able to combine you know the little lessons that we've learned in this video. So you can do an, I'll get into more things with if statements, but that's called a selection statement. That's how you can select certain things and your computer makes decisions, you know, just like you make a decision every day where to wear a jacket if you go outside in the cold every day. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I would tell you guys where you can find more documentation on the new Swift programming language, which is what this video is on. I don't think I mentioned that, but there's not much. And that's why I'm trying to make these tutorials but I don't have much experience with it either. It's funny, I saw someone looking for a Swift developer with five years experience, it was a joke, but you get what I mean, you know, this could be really big and it's really cool because this is one of the um, one of the most current languages that may be, you know, really big and may be currently used a lot, so it's really cool. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a great day.